Today I'm talking about coloring books. They're supposed to be a relaxing activity, right? Well, for me, I'm not very artsy, and a traditional adult coloring book is actually kind of stressful for me because it requires a lot of creative decision making that doesn't come naturally to me. So why color if you don't really enjoy it? Well, I still want a simple screen-free activity that doesn't take up much space. So I have figured out ways that I enjoy coloring that focus more on the process and less on the result. This fits my skill level and personality better. Maybe some of these ideas will work for you too. I've known about paint by number since I was a kid, but until recently I hadn't heard about the less messy color by number. Last year I was in a local puzzle shop and kind of randomly purchased this Mystery Mosaics color by number book by Mindwear. I like following instructions and the feeling of completing something with my hands, so this is pretty much right up my alley. Mindwear has other kinds of color by number books and even sells a coordinating colored pencil set to make following instructions even easier. I do have a couple of cautions about these. One is that the numbers are pretty small. Two is that I tend to press hard when I'm coloring and my hand gets tired really quickly. I can't really finish one page in a single sitting, so maybe using fine tipped markers would be better if you're like that. Another recommendation for a decision free drawing activity is any book by artist Thomas Pavit. I picked these books up with some credit I had at a used bookstore. The first one I got was 1000 Dot to Dot Cities. I know this is not really coloring, but I'm going to include it anyway. Each page has a picture made up of 1000 dots, so again the numbers are really tiny to fit them all. I completed this book last winter, and it was fun to see each drawing slowly take form. Perfectionists are going to want to use a ruler, but I just did them all freehand since I'm only interested in completing it and not displaying it when I'm finished. My second book is Quirkle's Cats. For this book, you're supposed to either choose five colors ranging from dark to light, or use cross-hatching in a single color. I personally liked the cross-hatching method as it was simpler and faster to do, and it looked better in the end. My last recommendation for the guided coloring book idea is this artful etching book I picked up at a used bookstore. It's sort of anti-coloring where you scratch off the black coating to reveal the color underneath. This book is nice because it gives you lots of examples and techniques if you don't already have your own ideas. Since my book was used, the included scratch stick was missing, so I had to get one from a friend, but you can use lots of things to make your etches. Bamboo skewers, the edge of a quarter or dime, this pointy Lego, or even your own fingernails. Oh no, never mind. Ugh, that feeling makes my teeth itch. The downside to this type of book is that the black coating leaves a flaky mess, so you'll want to have a trash can nearby so you can brush off your page every so often. And you betcha I'm going to remove 100% of the black coating on at least one page. After learning the cross hatching technique from the Quirkles book and the texture techniques from the Artful Etching book, I wanted to see if I could complete a regular coloring book page in those ways. Here I have a Joanna Basford Enchanted Forest coloring book, which looks really cool with hidden things to find and maybe a little sense of traveling throughout the book, but it's so detailed and I think it took me several sittings just to complete the title page, but I have to tell myself that the coloring police are not going to come after me if I color the page like this, like this, or even this. And when I looked back, I realized I liked these simpler techniques. They look more artistic and were much faster, easier, and therefore more relaxing to do. All right, this third idea is for when your brain is really tired or overstimulated. You don't want to do anything artistic, but you need something for your hands to do while you're listening to music, a podcast, or audiobook, or just have the TV on in the background. You could simply pick one color and evenly cover the entire page or try finding a feel-good coloring tool, like maybe a waxy crayon or a creamy oil pastel. The goal is to have a calming sensory experience, not a creative one. Just ask a two-year-old for sensory recommendations. Maybe try ketchup or mayonnaise. I'm joking, I'm joking. Or am I? 